Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great Victor Herbert musical hit, The Red Mill, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Miss Reza Stevens. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening to everyone. Well, on stage tonight is one of the happiest shows ever to hit Broadway, The Red Mill. Picture lovely Reza Stevens in the costume of a Dutch girl in the charming village of Kotvik on Z. As for me, well, I'm going to slip into a checkered vest, clap on a straw hat on my head, and call myself Kid Connor. You know what my buddy's name is? Con Kidder. It all begins in another old Dutch village named, uh, uh, let me see if I can pronounce it, New York. In old New York. Con, what do you want to go to Europe for? Romance, boy, romance. The European girls will be crazy about you. Ah, oh, not so fast. There are plenty of lovely dishes right here in good old America. If a spare afternoon you should happen to have And you start on a leisurely stroll up Fifth Avenue There is where with haughty air You'll see them as they walk With velvets and laces and sables and folding them Really, you'll nearly drop dead on beholding them. Lucky's the earl who can marry a girl from Fifth Avenue, New York. In old New York, in old New York, the peach crop's always fine. They're sweet and fair and on the square, the maze of Manhattan for mine. You cannot see in Gay Perry, in London, or in Cork. The queens you'll meet on any street in old New York. But just the same, kid, I'd like to make the trip. Yeah, you could go to Paris and marry a French countess. Or go to Holland and marry a Dutch duchess. When is the boat sail? Tomorrow. We're off. Goodbye, New York. Goodbye, New York. We're sailing on our way. Farewell to Queens and Bowling Greens and Brooklyn and Battery Bay. We'll make our home in Reims and Rome and Amsterdam and York. A kiss for each and every peach. Goodbye, New York. So this is Holland. Hiya, Holland. You know something, pal? We got to find a place to eat tonight yeah. and sleep, too. It's got to be cheap sleep. We're broke. Tell you what, let's ask that little Fräulein over there. Okay. Hey, Mabel. Yes? Were you addressing me, gentlemen? Uh, do you have any idea where we could sleep tonight? Well, I don't know. Well, how about that red mill? I better be real warm and comfortable. Yes, very cozy. You two and the ghost. You mean the, the mill is haunted? 
Every night at midnight, the ghost of a poor, unhappy bride walks through the mill, searching for her lost lover, Henry. Thank you, and good night, Red Mill. <laughs> hey, uh, what's your name? Gretchen. Tell me, why do you look so wretched, Gretchen? <laughs> Tomorrow is my wedding day. Tomorrow, by this time, I shall be the wife of that fat old governor of Zealand. Well, if you don't love him, why marry him? My father is forcing me. Oh, now, look. A pretty girl like you shouldn't worry. Of course not. The Rover boys are here. Right. <laughs> hey, got an idea. Yeah? She can't marry the governor of Zealand tomorrow if she marries me right now. Why, you hardly know me. <laughs> you think of a better way to get acquainted? <laughs> Why, I'm falling in love with you at 80 miles an hour. Yeah, and wait till he shifts into second gear. I don't understand how this has happened so fast. You haven't seen very many musical comedies, have you, girl? Well, frankly, I've been waiting a long time for somebody handsome and young and exciting to come along and sweep me off my feet. So, if you say that you love but me, love but me, I love you. There, I said it, and you know what love is. Love is a strange little elf in sprite, blessed with the deadliest aim, shooting his arrows to left and right, bagging the rarest game, filling our hearts with a glad surprise, almost too good to be true. Only because you are you, dear. Not that I am fair. Hey, Gretchen, where do people go in this country when they, when they want to get married? To the burgomaster. Oh, but my father's the burgomaster here, so we'll have to go to the next town. Uh, just one moment, my fine young friend. Oh, father! Have you forgotten, my dear Gretchen, you are not marrying this silly young American, but His Excellency, the governor of Zealand. Now, just a minute. You're pretty high-handed, Mr. Virgo, mister. Back where we come from, in little old New York, a girl can marry anyone she chooses. Well, this is little old Catwick on Z. And Gretchen, since you seem to be so fond of this old red mill, I, I think I shall lock you up here overnight. No! And here you shall stay until the governor arrives to lead you to the altar. Oh, Father, please, I'm frightened. I'm... Come, come, in you go. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't lock her up. You can't do this. You can't force her to wipe... I guess he can. Good day, gentlemen. I think I've seen that guy someplace before. Yeah, on a beer mug. Hey, 
Hey, what's that? Oh, just the old mill turning, I guess. Looks just like a skeleton, doesn't it? Waving its arms in the moonlight. I want to go home. But, Con, the girl I love's inside there. But the boy I love is outside here. <laughs> Gretchen? Hey, Gretchen, are you all right? Gretchen! Oh, she's gone. Hey, look, look, there's somebody up there in the tower of the mill. Listen. Gretchen, is that you? Who else would it be? Hey, Gretch, how did you get way up there? Oh, I climbed up the stairs inside the mill. Ha- have you seen the ghost? No, not yet. Well, when you see her, ask if she's got a friend. <laughs> a live one. I can't see your face in the moonlight, Gretch, but I know that you're as lovely as the moonbeams themselves. Moonbeams shining soft above Let me beg of you Find the one I dearly love Tell her I'll ever be That's the name of the ghost boyfriend. Farewell, Henry, my love. Gone. Poof. Con, we've got to get Gretchen out of there. And I got an idea. Look, watch the blades in the mill. Uh-huh. Now, suppose you grabbed hold of one of the wings when it sweeps close to the ground. Uh-huh. You hang on to it, swing on up, and rescue Gretchen out of the tower window on the way down. Uh-uh. <laughs> Then I'll do it. Gretchen, can you hear me? Yes. Swing up on one of the arms of the mill and rescue you. Oh, be careful. Yeah. Here I go. So long, kid. Bone voyage. Oh. Oh. Hey, Gretchen, lean out. I'm leaning. Father, lean out all over. Gotcha. Hang on. This is the ground, all out. Oh. oh, thank you, thank you for getting me out of that awful mill. Now we've got to get away from your father, sweetheart. Let's go to the next town and get married. And I'll stay here and stall the burgomaster. Good. And when he unlocks the door tomorrow morning, he's going to find nothing but echoes inside the old red mill. And when he asks the reason...
return for the second act of The Red Mill in just a moment. Let's suppose you must pay $2.35 today for products and services that cost you only a dollar in 1939, but that the price at which you are permitted to sell your services has gone up from $1 in 1939 to only $1.45 today. That, in brief, is what has happened to the railroads. The wages, prices, and taxes they must pay have considerably more than doubled in the last dozen years while their average revenue for hauling a ton of freight a mile has increased by less than one half. As a concrete illustration of what happens when revenue lags so far behind expenses, consider this fact. The cost to the railroads of providing the nation's transportation this year will be about $1 billion more than it would have cost to do the job at the price and wage level of only two years ago. Yet the additional revenue the railroads will earn from the most recent freight rate increase the only one allowed since 1949, will amount to only a little more than half that huge increase in costs. And these steadily rising operating costs, unfortunately, are burdening the railroads at a time when they are doing everything possible to expand their carrying capacity and improve their efficiency as much and as quickly as possible. Today, then, it is important that the railroads be permitted to charge for their services a price more nearly in line with the general level of prices that the railroads like you must pay for everything they need. And here's another important fact to bear in mind. Railroad freight rates, always a small part of the cost of most things you buy, are today even smaller when compared to prices generally than they were before World War II. And freight rates that would more realistically reflect current conditions would still leave freight charges one of the best bargains in America today. We're ready for Act Two of Victor Herbert's The Red Mill, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Reza Stevens, with Jack Kirkwood as the Burgomaster. moonbeams, just dawn beams, sunbeams. Gretchen, you look even lovelier now than you did in the starlight. Tell me, have you said that to many girls? Oh, sure. I never meant it before. See, until I met you, Gretchen, I never really wanted to settle down with one girl. So, in America, I change girls 365 times a year. What? (laughs) Every day a different girl? Why not? I don't eat the same egg every morning for breakfast. Every day is ladies' day with me. I'm quite at their disposal all the while. And my pleasure, it is double if they come to me in trouble. Well, I always find a way to make them smile. The little darlings. No doubt I should have married long ago. It's the proper thing to do, you'll all agree. But I never could find any fun in wasting all my time on one. So every day is ladies' day with me. It's a frightful thing to think of all the hearts that I have broken. Although each one fell in love with me without the slightest token. Though among my vulgar creditors I'm fearfully in debt. It's because I have afforded anything that I could get. But I must say I've enjoyed the best of what there is in life. I've been lucky in my love affairs. I've never had a wife. And I don't begrudge the little dears those necklaces of pearls. All the money that I've ever saved is what I've spent on girls for every day is ladies day with me I'm quite at their disposal all the while and my pleasure it is double if they come to me in trouble for I always find a way to make them smile the little darling no doubt I should have married long ago. Should have married long it's the ago. proper thing to do, you'll all agree. Do, you'll all but agree. I never could find any fun in wasting all my time on one. So every 
every day is Ladies' Day with me. Every day is Ladies' Day. So every day is Ladies' Day with me. Well, that's how it was before I met you. And now every day is, is Gretchen's Day for oh, me. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm only worried about what's going to happen when my father unlocks the old red mill. Oh, my buddy will take care of him, all right. Oh, good morning, Mr. Burgomaster. Good morning. What brings you out to the mill so early? Just checking up on my daughter. Well, it's too late. She's already checked out. What? Where is she? Gretchen? Where are you? Gretchen! Oh, I must find her. I'll spare no expense. No expense? I understand Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are in this country visiting. I believe I'll hire them. Sir, let me get them for you. I'll get Holmes and Watson on this job for you right away. Hiya, Mr. and Mrs. Connor. We aren't Mr. and Mrs. yet. Yeah, we couldn't afford to get married, Connor. Boy, have I got the cure for that. Put on this costume quickly. Huh? I don't get it. I'm going to be Sherlock Holmes and you're going to be Dr. Watson. We'll collect a fee to find this lost girl enough to get you married. Where'll we go after we're married? Oh, I know a wonderful spot. I have an idea you're thinking of the same place I am. <laughs> In the beautiful isle of a dream, dear, there is never a sorrow or pain. Every trouble and care quickly vanishes there, and all is made happy. And we'll sail o'er the sea Where for just you and me There's a home in the earth of a dream So we'll leave this cold, weary old world here Where there's nothing You can stop being Romeo and start being Dr. Watson. We got some plain and fancy Sherlocking to do. Well, Dr. Watson, how do I look? Oh, very big a street, very big a street, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Gentlemen. Ha-ha! You are the burgomaster of Katwink on Z. That's amazing. Uh, how did you know me, Mr. Holmes? Oh, elementary. Elementary, my dear Burgomaster. I want you to meet my assistant and eminent colleague, the celebrated Dr. Watson. Delighted to make you a... From the way he talks, he must be British. If he were any more British, he couldn't talk at all. Now, uh, Mr. Holmes, uh, Dr. Watson... How much will you charge to find my daughter? Well, sir, our price depends on the difficulty of the job. Is your daughter young and beautiful? Oh, yes. Well, then it will be very expensive. Because, you know, beautiful young girls are very hard to find these days. <laughs> and how much shall we charge, Dr. Watson? <laughs> Dr. Watson says, and I quote... <laughs> Five hundred and fifty. <laughs> Five guilders. Oh, it's a deal. Here's the money. But I demand that you bring my daughter to this very spot no later than four o'clock this afternoon, in time for her wedding to the governor of Zealand. Quick, Dr. Watson, go get married. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Holmes, in 15 seconds it will be 4 o'clock. If you don't produce my daughter by then, I'll have you thrown in jail. Mr. Burgomaster, I don't think you like me. Your time is up, you swindler. Just a minute. Listen. Is that my daughter? Mr. Burgomaster, do you believe in the ghost in the old red mill? Certainly not. Then that's your daughter. Richard, you're just in time for your wedding to the governor. Ah, uh, there's been a little change in plans, Mr. Burgomaster. You see, I've been going around with Mr. Kama. <laughs> On windmills. Yes, and we liked it so much we got married. Wow! Why, you, you, I, you, I, you could, I, you, uh. <laughs> I think the Burgomaster has just blown a gasket. <laughs> <laughs> Gretchen, let's get away from here. Where'll we go? Well, may I recommend a wonderful spot called Manhattan? Could someone from Holland be happy there? Well, Peter Stuyvesant liked it. In old New York, in old New York, the peach crop's always fine. They're sweet and fair, and on the square, the maze of Manhattan for mine. You cannot see in gay Paris, in London or in Cork. The queen shall be on any street in old Stevens will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Jack Kirkwood, Peter Leeds, and our entire company. The Red Mill, with music by Victor Herbert and book and lyrics by Henry Blossom, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. You got your Christmas shopping done yet? Man, it won't be long, you know, until Santa comes a-calling. And as you go in and out of the stores looking for gifts for the youngsters and the rest of your loved ones, remember this. The wealth of the wonderful presents that tempt your eye in every shop window, like the everyday items on your weekly shopping list, are made possible by the continent-wide, low-cost, mass transportation service of America's railroads. Now, here again is lovely Reza Stevens. It was wonderful going around with you tonight, Gordon, on the windmill. Well, any time you want to be rescued, Reza, honey, let me know. Who is the damsel in distress next week? Nadine Connor. Oh. And she's going to be the lovely Rosalie, and we'll be singing the music of Romberg and Gershwin. Oh, sounds wonderful. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Reza. Come back oh, soon. All aboard. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye to all of you, and especially to my dear grandmother. <laughs> The Red Mill was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers' Starlift. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Proceeding was transcribed. Next, Lily Pons guests on the Telephone Hour on NBC.